Hello and welcome back. Today we are talking about functions. So what is a function? A function is kind of like a kiosk. With a kiosk, it waits for instructions for you, and then once you give it instructions, it returns you something. For example, like a red box kiosk. If you use a red box kiosk, it asks you for which movie you want, and it asks for your credit card information, and then it returns to you a movie. <laughs> And by the way, you've already seen functions. So let's go ahead and look at R and see some of the functions we've already seen. So for example, we saw the C function, which stood for concatenate. And our input, or the things we put into it, is just a bunch of things we want put together. And then the output is those same things, but they are put into a vector. So all functions begin with the function name. In this case, it is C, followed by parentheses. So we saw C, which was a way that we just put a bunch of things together. We also saw LS, and notice that input, there is no input required. You could put input, and uh, as I show you later, you can look at the documentation and figure out what kind of inputs you can put into it. Uh, but for this one, there is no input required. And the output is just a list of objects in R's memory, so we'll go ahead and see what that looks like. And if you look down here, it shows us well, for me, because I've been planning ahead for some of the future videos, it shows a couple of things that I have. Um, but for you, if you're starting a fresh R session, it might not show anything. Um, now, let's go ahead and look at a data frame, something else we saw. So we're going to create a vector called letters and a vector called numbers. And if we just ran those and looked at that, we see, again, our vector of letters and our vector of numbers. And then we saw the data frame. And so here we put column one, which is just the column name. Column one equals letters, column two equals numbers. And then if we run that, we see a data frame with two columns and three rows. So in this case, our input was one or more vectors that we want to turn into columns. And then the output is a data frame, which like I said before, is like an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, another thing that we saw is the sum function and as before the input is one or more numbers to be summed now here i'm showing you two ways you could do it you could either just list a bunch of numbers or you could provide it with a vector either way it's going to sum up those numbers and get the same result 11.8 so again the input is one or more numbers to be summed and the output is the sum of those numbers and then we'll do a couple more before I'll talk about um, different arguments that you might have. So here's mean and same thing as before. We could either list it as a, a bunch of numbers or we could give it a vector. Actually, let me show you one other way we could do it. So I'm just gonna copy that part, um, get rid of that. So I'll create an object called sum underscore numbers equals that. And then you could do mean of sum underscore numbers. So that's basically the same thing as line 27 here, except, uh, let me make that a little bigger so you can see it. Same thing as line 27, uh, except I'm kind of separating it into two steps um, in this instance, which uh, is probably a good idea to do that anyway, because sometimes uh, you could do a function within a function within a function, which gets really confusing about which nested function you're in. And we can talk about that more later. So that covers mean. There's also factor, which we saw. And so factor, uh, in this case, or factor requires usually two arguments. So the vector that you're trying to turn into a factor, and then the levels that you want to restrict it to. Because remember with a factor, we say that there are only, are only a few um, there are only a few values that this particular um, variable can have, and so you got to specify what those levels are. And so maybe actually let me make this a little more complicated: a, b, b, c, and then b or something like that. So we are providing it a vector, which is just a bunch of a, B's, and C's, and then we are specifying what those levels can be. And then if we run that, it returns our vector, but it also tells you what levels it expects. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to load uh, the Flexplot package, which if you followed my video from a couple videos ago, hopefully you've already done that. Um, and the, we're doing that for two reasons. One is so we could use the Avengers dataset, which is built into Flexplot. 
uh, as well as to look at some more complex functions. So to load in the flexplot package, you're gonna run library flexplot. And then here is a new function uh, that you can use, which is head. And so what head will do, if you look down here, is it will show you the first six or seven rows. Let's see, one, two, three, five, I guess the number is right there. It'll show you the first six rows of a data set. And so it'll, it's basically a good way to give you a preview of what the data set looks like. And so the input here is a data frame and then the output is the first six rows of the data frame. Uh, another way you could do it and inspect your data is using str. So the input is the same as before, but the output's a little bit different. So I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see. So it kind of gives you a summary and it says there are 812 observations and 15 variables. And then next to each of these dollar sign, it lists all the variables and then it shows you what type it is. So integer, that's something that we didn't talk about because uh, for the purposes of what we're doing, um, numbers and integers are basically the same thing. Um, and then we've also got a character and more characters. We don't have any uh, factors in this particular data set because that's how I designed it. Sometimes factors can be annoying to work with. So oftentimes I just use characters instead of factors. But anyway, that one just gives you a lot more information, which is really cool. And then it also lists like the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 uh, values of each of the columns. So that's very helpful, especially if you have a massive data set that has like hundreds of columns. You don't want to be doing head, otherwise you're going to have, you're going to clog your output. Um, instead, it might be better to do str. It's a little uh, more concise. So, um, so now that we have a data set, and in the next video I'm going to show you, I think it's the next video, I'm going to show you how to import data sets. Uh, but now that we have a data set, we can use some more complex functions. So the flexplot package comes with a flexplot function, which is designed to make it easy to do um, really sophisticated plots. And so what we are going to do is we're going to type in flexplot and then formula equals PTSD tilde speed. I'll separate these into different lines so it's more clear what the arguments are. Data equals Avengers and method equals LM. So for the flexplot plot function, the flexplot function, uh, there are multiple arg multiple arguments you can give it, or multiple inputs. In this case, I've given it a formula, which is PTSD tilde speed, which tells flexplot how to plot it, and then a data set, and then a I'll bring that on, on another line, and then a method for fitting a line, in this case, LM, which stands for linear model, or basically it's just gonna do a straight line. And the output is a plot. So let's go ahead and run that. And we see this lovely plot that shows PTSD as a function of speed. And so notice that PTSD is on the y-axis and speed is on the x-axis. That's basically what that formula is telling it is. What is the x-axis and what is the y-axis? Now in this case, we've only given it three arguments, but in reality, there are lots and lots and lots of flexplot arguments. There's like 15 of them. And so uh, that comes to another important element of working with functions, and that is accessing a function's documentation. Every single function in R has documentation, and there's a very easy way to access it. And that is by putting a question mark in front of the function name. So for this example, I'm gonna do question mark flexplot. And then in my window over here, it brings up the documentation. So this is documentation that I wrote. This right here is the title, create a flexible plot or flexplot. And then description is just a very brief um, explanation of what the function does. So in this case, create a flexible plot. Flexplot allows users to create histograms, bar charts, jitter, density plots, panel plots, scatter plots, etc. Much of the decision making is automated, automated, which is pretty freaking awesome. So there you know it was written by me because nobody else in their right mind would say pretty freaking awesome. So um, how you read documentation is once you go down to the usage, I mean, that just gives you a nice summary. But this right here lists all the possible arguments you can give it. So flexplot could take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So flexplot can take up to 22 arguments. 
Uh, most of the time, you're not going to use a lot of these or you will use them very rarely or in special circumstances, but it tells you all the different types of arguments that you could supply it. Formula, data, we already saw that. Related, we probably won't see that for quite a while. Bins, labels, breaks, method, etc. And so you might be thinking, okay, what does this mean? What is labels and why would I want to use that? Well, you can go down to this area, which arguments, which explains what each of the inputs mean. So formula, says a formula of the form y tilde x plus a vertical pipe b plus z um, and so that actually gives you a little bit of information about how you can do a formula um, and the data set and related in bins basically it explains what each of these arguments are um, now you might be reading this and say i don't really get what you're trying to say well then you can go down to details Details is for describing in more depth what uh, these arguments might mean, because you're kind of limited in how much information you could put here. So if you want to get more information, that's where details comes from. Uh, we'll go into Flexplot in more detail, um, so I'm not actually going to read that. But if you want to, you're totally welcome to. But that tells you more information you might need than just from up here. And then author, yay, that's me. Uh, but most importantly and most helpful, I think, is the examples. So all these things right here should run. So for example, if I were to just copy that, oh, I actually got a copy from up there. So if I'm gonna copy that and then paste it here, and then if I run it, this example should run. And so it's, and it, it, that's exactly what it does, it does run. And so um, the exercises or the examples are a really great way to give you a better introduction into what R is doing or what that particular function is doing and to see examples of how to use it. So that's how you would access the documentation. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, delete those. We don't really need them. Um, the other important thing is, uh, like I said, there are 20 arguments. You might be wondering, okay, how does the computer know which argument I'm giving it? Well, notice what I did here is I said formula equals, data equals, method equals. And so I'm very clearly telling it um, what all these things are. And if I don't, for example, I'm not saying bins. And so... Uh, it's just going to assume I want three bins. Now it's actually irrelevant. We're not binning anything here and you'll learn later what that means. Um, and we're not providing any labels. And so it's just going to assume the defaults if you don't explicitly specify things. Now you could, what you could do is you could go flex plot and then not name your arguments and just go PTSD tilde speed uh, Avengers and that will work. And why will that work even though I'm not naming the arguments? Uh, the reason why is because I'm going in order. I'm given, it's assuming the first thing I put is formula, which it was. It's assuming the second thing I put is the data set, which it was. But now it's going to assume the third thing I put is related. But if I go down here and I just, so this was, this did say method equals LM, but if I don't name it, then it's going to assume that I'm saying related equals LM. And then it's going to throw an error at me. It says argu argument is not interpreted as logical. Basically, it's saying, all right, I was expecting a true or a false because that's what related should have is it should be either true or false. But instead, I'm giving it uh, air quote or quote, not air quotes, quotes LM. So it's going to bark at me. Um, so uh, here's my hint. Uh, it's probably best to name your arguments always instead of just listing them. I know it's easier and faster to just list them in the right order, uh, but it's also easy to screw things up. So it's probably best to just name them. So to correct this, I would go formula equals, and then data equals, and then method equals. And then that way there is no confusion. R always knows what to do. There are the arguments uh, listed. There are the details of the arguments, and uh, there are more details for those things that you need more details for, and then there are the examples. So now you can see them. Sorry about that. So there are other helpful functions that I use quite frequently. Median, 
which computes the median of a data set, SD, which computes a standard deviation, LM, which computes uh, a linear model, and then summary, which it depends on the type of information you're providing it, um, but we tend to use those a lot in R. So, uh, practice. What I want you to do is I want you to look up how to use the LM function. Then I want you to fit a regression model. And so for that model, you're just gonna use the Avengers data set, which again is built into Flexplot. And then what you're going to do is you're going to predict PTSD from speed, basically just like I did before, except you're gonna use the LM function. And then what I want you to do is to report the slope and the intercept as well as the models are squared. And then just as a hint, earlier I mentioned you're going to use the summary function throughout R. This is one place where you're gonna need the summary function. So what I would recommend doing is reading the documentation on LM and looking at the examples because it has an example in there of exactly what I'm gonna ask you to do. So with that, let's review our learning objectives. Number one, understand what a function is. And again, a function is uh, a set of instructions in R that takes input from you and then returns something. Number two, how do you recognize a function? You recognize a function anytime there's basically a parenthesis. So that's the name of the function followed by parentheses and then arguments. So anytime you see those a name and then some parentheses, you can say, hey, that's probably a function. Um, number three, how do we access documentation in a function? And again, you just put a question mark before the function name. Number four, naming the arguments versus listing the arguments. Again, like I said before, you could take the shortcut and not name your arguments and just list the arguments in order, uh, but it's easy for you to get confused and not list them in the right order. So it's probably better just to name your function. So like that was where we did flexplot formula equals, data equals, method equals, that sort of thing. And then finally, know how to use the following functions, C or concatenate, data.frame, LS, which again, that one just lists everything in R's memory, uh, sum, which gives you the sum of a bunch of numbers, mean gives you the mean of a bunch of numbers, head shows you the first six rows of a data set, STR shows you a lot of information about data frame, and then flexplot. You don't have to know the details of all these just as much as we've covered today. So with that, I'll see you next time.